Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Nick. In today's video, I wanna talk about how to sex your crested gecko. Uh, this is something that, you know, everybody wants to know the sex of the crested gecko. They wanna know how to sex their crested gecko. And they wanna know what's the best way to sex your crested gecko. How can you tell right off the bat? How can you tell early, later? How, what, you know, how can we do this? When you're sexing your crested gecko, um, let's say, let's say they're 15 grams. That's when you're gonna to start to see a noticeable difference between a male and a female, typically. Um, as you can see, Pamela here, Pamela here is one of our proven females. She does have a slight bulge, and a lot of females will have slight bulges, um, but once the male bulges start to take off, it's undeniably a male. You cannot mess it up. Their bulge gets twice the size of their tail when they're young, you know, width-wise. It, it's, you, you can't miss it. So. One way to sex your crested gecko, to be 100% right, is to wait till that gecko hits 15 grams. You should know by 15. If it's a late bloomer, which we've all had that happen, that definitely happens and there's no denying it. Um, usually by 25 grams, you should know. I have heard people say that sometimes their geckos have held out till 30 grams. I cannot fathom them dropping at 30 grams. That would be a, a real punch to the stomach, you know, thinking you have a, a female and then all of a sudden it just drops. But I've noticed that for me, I can pretty much tell if it's a male about 15 grams. Um, it starts to show and then I feel confident sexing a gecko at 20 grams. I, I can 100% sex a gecko at 20 grams. Some people will guarantee 100% way sooner. I wait till 20 grams just because that's when I can tell if it's a male or a female. That's just me though. If you want to sex a gecko that's under 15 grams, what you're gonna need is a uh, loop. So when I say you need a loop, you need one of these right here. It's a magnifying glass that has different levels of zoomed in and out. I, I don't know if it says on it or different zoomed different levels of magnifying ability, but I don't know which one's which. Um, but what this is gonna let you do is you turn on the light for whichever side you wanna use. Uh, I typically use the bigger side just because I have a very hard time. Like, the smaller side would probably be better overall, but when sexing a gecko, trying to get them to stay still long enough to do this is, for me, difficult. Um, there are some ways around it. All right, so one way around it here, and here's Pam, my lovely assistant. Look at that. Um, is to kind of hold them like this. There you go. You see that? You see how you can kind of get them a little calmer? And then what you'll do is, is you'll come in with your loop, right? And you'll get under here, and then you can look for pores. Um, let me see here. Yeah, obviously she won't have any that are like visibly large. Let's see here. Yep, can't see any, right? Cause it's a female, so. But that's one way of doing it. Uh, the reason that I used Pam is because she's an incredible assistant and she's a chill gecko who just wants to sit in your hand. So it's very easy for me to do it with her. You take a baby on the other hand, it is complete madness and you you don't want to like squish them, but you have to press, you know, kind of cup them firmly and just kind of look at them. It is... Uh, it's not stressful on the gecko if you do it correctly, but if you do see your gecko getting stressed out, definitely stop. Um, they're gonna be like a little stressed out, but you can make sure that they're not like dropping tail level stressed out, right? So it's just one way to, you know, to, to do it. And this is a pretty handy trick um, and you'll, you'll actually be a lot faster because the issue is, is, is trying to get this gecko to get, get on its back and, and even Pam here, she doesn't really want to be, and then try to get enough time to, to get your loop here and get it in there, it's not, it's very difficult. Unless you can get a gecko where you spread them and then you really get in there, but I, 
I have a very difficult time doing that. I mainly use this method just because I can cup the geckos easiest and I can quick in and out done, not stressing them out too much, which is kind of the whole goal to it. So what the what the pores do is, and that why that is, uh, is a male, is uh, that uh, secretes their scent so that when you know they walk around on things, they're leaving their scent, they're leaving their trail. Um, it's good for breeding season, obviously, you know, so the female knows the male is there and, you know, if she's interested, she'll go in his territory and then they'll mate, kind of type deal. Um, the, it, since it does secrete on there, it, it's for them to mark their territory, right? And you can see them because it's really big. T tons of reptiles have them. I know bearded dragons have huge ones. Um, but... Females can have pores as well. We call them pseudo pores. Um, females have pseudo bulges. As you, I mean, if I if I were to just post a picture of her base of her tail and that area, and not include her body, people would probably say that that's a probable male if it was just based on the bulge. So, you know, pores don't always tell 100% of the truth because, like I said, a female can't have pseudo pores. Um, you know, I've seen females that have ginormous pores and then ones that don't and then ones that have big old bulges and then ones that don't and, and things like that. So that is why personally, like I said, I like to wait till, you know, 15 grams at the earliest, 20 grams preferably. And then I know, great, I have a male, great, I have a female. So pseudo pores exist. Males do have pores though. You can tell them apart the more experienced you are. <clears throat> The male's pores should be, they should run longer and they should go further out like on his legs and stuff like that. Like, like it should be, it should be like something like, you know, here to here. And I'll insert a picture from online just so you guys can really see it uh, really zoomed in. So a lot of the times, like if, you, if you're on my morph market and you see that I have a crested gecko available and you message me and you say, hey, can you look, can you sex this one? I will tell you no, I cannot sex this one if it's under, you know, 20 grams, right? I cannot sex it and I will look for pores, but I can't guarantee it. I can't be 100% right. I do my best, obviously. I would not just be like, oh, it's pro it's a 50-50 shot, right? So it's probably male. You can definitely tell. And there's some, there's a lot of breeders who are really, really good at it. I am not, I haven't done it enough to be Oh, this is 100% a female, or this is 100% a male. And I don't, and, and even the breeders that I know that have been doing this for a very long time, they're not going to guarantee you sex at, at, you know, four, five, six grams. Um, maybe at 10 grams they will. I don't know. I'm not confident enough to do that. Maybe someone else is. And if they are, good for them. And if they're right all the time, good for them, because I'm just not going to risk that. I'll tell you, probable female, and that's why you see a lot of the times people saying, probable male probable female and even big breeders doing that because they know more than likely they know that it's gonna if they say probable male they truly believe it's gonna be a male if they say probable female they truly believe it's gonna be a female but you're not always right and like I talked about with the late bloomers and things like that makes it very difficult to sex young geckos so if, if that's how you want to go about it go for it um but i would not guarantee or think that you're guaranteed sex until they're about 20 you know 20 grams is about the sweet spot for me personally so i hope this kind of helped you know if you want to start sexing your babies and things like that uh you know reach out to your local pangea dealer and buy one of these little pangea loops um I like using these. I know some people use uh, jewelry loops and things like that, and I, I'm sure that that's fine too. I just, I just like using this because this is what I bought. So, what are you gonna do? You know, the one thing, like I said, I would just be very careful guaranteeing sex of your geckos up to a certain age. And if you if you buy a bunch of babies because you want to be a breeder one day, or you know you're working on a future project, so you buy, you know, four or five babies. Um, and hopefully someone can sex them properly for you and, and give you really good, um, you know, like if you wanted two males and four females or something like that, they can really help you out and they can hopefully get you to that ratio, you know, hopefully. Um, but I wouldn't think that anything's guaranteed with babies and things like that. So I hope this video helped um, on how to sex your geckos and kind of why people sex their geckos and 
and kind of just what to look for because it's it's very easy to get caught up in just seeing the little male female symbol and get excited when it's a five gram gecko but it's not always the case so that's gonna wrap up this video guys if you did like it give it a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button and until next time guys stay safe and stay positive